Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about setting up a garden space to grow indeterminate potatoes. Indeterminate potatoes take anywhere from 80 to 120 days to mature and they're just like indeterminate tomatoes, they continue to produce. So we're going to be setting up this space to grow the indeterminate potatoes. I want to have more potatoes my third year into my garden. I want this to be more of a homestead garden with respect to being able to feed my wife and I and share with family and friends over the entire season. So one thing we want to add is a lot of potatoes. So how do you do that? So I recommend the indeterminate variety because you can plant them in a way, and I'll talk about that, so that every six inches or so of growth you get another layer of potatoes. Those are perfect for potato bags and potato towers. This used to be a space where I had eight 17 gallon metal containers. You probably have seen them. It just wasn't productive. I wasn't really utilizing this space in any efficient way. I had to come all the way out here to water them. So I moved them all down to my container down, on that down. side. So I'm gonna grow my indeterminate potatoes right in this space. I'm gonna be growing in a 150 gallon fabric pot. This is from Root Pouch. I don't sell these at my seed shop. I am affiliated with them, but I have five, 10 and 20 gallon root pouches there and that's what I grew some potatoes in this year as an experiment and they really really did well. So this is 150 gallons. I'm going to show you how to set this up with the, the uh, soil and fill it in a cheap way and then just talk about how you would grow the indeterminate potatoes in there. Now you don't have to use a fabric pot like this. This has 21, in, uh, 21 inch sides but you may want to use a grow bag or a raised bed space or some place where you can kind of raise the soil level because the indeterminate variety will send out new potatoes like at every six inch interval when you add in more straw, leaves, soil, or whatever you want to keep covering up the vine. Let's set this up. First thing I'm going to do is put two inches of shredded hardwood in the bottom. So I cleared out the area, leveled it off mostly, and I dropped down some cardboard to block weeds. Now if you're going to be doing this in a place where you don't have weeds, you don't need to do this, but I figured I'd show you all the steps. Maybe you're starting this in fresh on uh, grass. So if this was grass, lots of weeds, put down a layer or two of cardboard, wet it down, that kind of helps mold it to the uh, shape of the earth there, and then we're going to drop, I don't know, two to four inches of mulch right on here, and that will help take care of uh, any weeds that would come through and be a problem. I like the fabric pots because the root systems actually will grow through the pot and into the earth, and that helps them manage water more. We're going to set this up with fertilizer and everything like that. So it's not so much that the roots grow through the fabric pot for nutrients, it's that they can get that extra water sometimes that helps out, especially in the heat of the summer. Now, you don't have to use this 150 gallon fabric pot. You can do any size. 20 gallons work perfectly well. 10 gallons work really well. That's what I used last year. The principle is going to be the same. We're going to fill the bottom of it, two inches of mulch, four inches of a mix of peat moss and other soils. You can use anything really with that. You want to use the peat moss because potatoes actually prefer more acidic soil. 5.5 pH to 6.5 pH. You know, they'll survive in that range. Uh, peat moss is inexpensive, so it will help you fill your container or your space. And it's also acidic, so it's going to help it stay below that 6.0 pH which is perfect for the potatoes. So a couple of tips. This is 150 gallons and if we're spending a hundred bucks to fill it, it's not really worth growing in it, at least not the first year. The beauty is, is that even if you have to spend a lot of money in the beginning, you can use it for years and years so it'll work out. But let's do this as cheaply as we can. On the bottom you can use any kind of wood chips. Fresh wood chips, wood chips from your property. Chip drop is a great place in a lot of states where they'll just drop wood chips off to you. On the inside you want to use something like what I use is a double shredded hardwood or you want to use aged wood chips that are broken down a little bit more. Maybe they've been sitting on your property four to six months and that just is a better use of wood chips in your containers as it won't compete for nitrogen with your plants. However, it's October so I'm setting this up now to plant in March, April and the reason I like to plant now is because I don't want to be doing this when it's cold out and the ground is frozen and my resources are frozen. So I set it up now. Plus it'll have four or five months to age and break down and be ready for the potatoes if you're using uh, wood chips that are more fresh or you're using manures that aren't fully broken down. So we have two inches or so of wood chips in there. Don't have to be perfect. The whole key is whatever container you're using, you want that six inches to be set up now because we're going to plant the indeterminate potatoes four inches down 
and then when they grow six inches we're going to add another layer four inches now that won't be shown in this video please subscribe I do everything in real time so I will show you how I plant this 150 gallon fabric pot and I'll show you how I um, plant and harvest so you'll see all the steps now any organic granular organic fertilizer works as good as any others they're basically all the same stuff in something like this four large handfuls scattered across there and I will mix that in off camera just mix it through it'll sit in there it'll be ready for your potatoes next we're going to add in the peat moss and other soils get about four inches and remember that peat moss is acidic so it will be creating an environment your potatoes like all right so how do you save money filling something this large I have a video where I filled a large uh, raised metal container I will link that and that's perfect if you're going to be growing other things in it again we're setting this up for potatoes in October we're going to be planting sometime in uh, March or April so right here is my compost that I made. It's about a year old, it's great stuff. In the back is some leftover bagged soil. Any kind of bagged soil from the big box stores is fine. You don't need to buy the high-end potting mixes or anything like that because we're kind of making our own. We're gonna be putting in a lot of peat moss and that's what most of those products are. So you can get something on sale if that's all you can get. Right in there is actually sheep compost. Locally, a fellow sells it for five bucks for a 50 pound bag. He just takes it out of his farm. So that's another way to save money. You can also look around for people that have horse farms and different um, kinds of uh, animals like that. See what they have in the way of manures and sometimes you can barter and trade other things. So in something this size, I think it's fine. Compost, some manures, some dirt just that was laying around and then we're gonna match it with about 50% peat moss. So the whole idea to keep it simple 50% peat moss, 50% of a combination of these other products, whatever you want to use. In a container that's smaller, or if you're going to be growing in it that month, you want to make sure that your compost is broken down fully, that your manures are broken down fully. Again, you don't want them competing with your plants for nitrogen. They do that when they're still decomposing and not fully composted down. And believe it or not, when you buy compost and manures in bags, it may sound like, from how you read it, that they're fully broken down, but often they're not. So let's just say in a 20-gallon container or a 10-gallon container or in a grow bag, I would be like, if you can get 50% compost, 50% peat moss, that's great. If you can get 50% peat moss, 50% any soil, just make sure that when you mix it, it's nice and loose, that's going to work fine too. You can always sprinkle in manures a little bit on top, however you want to do it, but it's not rocket science. 50% peat, 50% other products. We'll throw in some, you know, let's just do that now. Even in top of all this, another two handfuls of the granite, uh, organic granular fertilizer. That's going to be plenty of feed for the potatoes. All right, let me dump in the peat moss, show you the ratio for that, and then we'll move on. So the peat moss is in, in general rule of thumb, 50-50 of whatever products you're using. That's a three cubic foot bale of peat moss. It's about 12 bucks. If you don't want to use peat moss, you could use cocoa core. That is more sustainable. However, peat moss has the acidity um, and it's a lot cheaper and easier to get in many places. So the whole idea, no matter what size container you're using, is they're putting down two inches of the shredded hardwood or a soil if you don't have shredded hardwood. And then we're putting four inches of something that's nice and loose has peat moss a little more acidic you know it's ready to go because we're going to plant that indeterminate i'm going to actually be planting red pontiac potatoes we're going to plant that down four inches deep so it'll have two inches to grow into four inches to grow through and then when that uh, greenery when the stalks get four to six inches tall we'll add in a layer of leaves or hay or more soil like this and we'll continue to do that until this whole container is filled and then we will get at least three layers of potatoes growing. And again, please subscribe. My channel is a real-time series, so we're setting this up in October. I'll be planting in March and April. I'll show you how to plant, show you how to tend, and show you how to harvest. So I am just gonna mix all this together. We don't need to add any more fertilizer into here. This is great. So let me mix it up, show you what the consistency should look like. So it's just about done. This is the consistency you want, nice and loose, a lot of peat moss in there. The potatoes will love it. And this is about maybe four, 
five inches high is getting close to that six inch mark. You don't have to be perfect. Anywhere from like five to eight inches is perfectly fine. When you're mixing in a big container like this and you put in all that stuff, it's really hard. I mean, I had to get my arms up to my elbows to really mix it all up. So you probably want to do it in stages. So I have the wood chips on the bottom or the shredded, double shredded hardwood on the bottom. Mix the materials here in the middle and then I'll put in some peat moss probably some more compost or just earth from my gardens to kind of level this off at six inches. So the planting will be in March, April, red Pontiacs, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put them extra close together, um, maybe space them out more, I don't know. I'm going to research it a little bit, but I tend to plant things more closely together. For potatoes, I'd rather have smaller potatoes because I cook them with uh, green beans and other things, so that's fine with me. But I'm going to really pack the potatoes in here and then as they grow up, like I said, we'll put in more layers, get more potatoes. And then I'm going to get the 10 gallon fabric pots, cut a hole in the bottom and continue the vine up through that and put that pot on here. So I really want to maximize that indeterminate vine growth of the potato all the way into August is probably when I'll harvest. That's when I harvested my first batch uh, this year. So we'll go 120 days. We'll try and get, get them in March, April, we'll get May, June, July, August, so we're really going to be at that 120 day point in July and August, which will be perfect. And maybe I'll do another planting, stagger them a little bit, you know, so that I can, you know, be harvesting potatoes all the way into October. The weather is just great here nowadays. So please subscribe, check out my YouTube channel for more videos on filling raised beds like this, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. October is a great time to get your beds ready, certainly for potatoes and for other plants because they will, able to, they will be able to sit. Soil life, microbiology will get in there, break stuff down and make it perfect for your plants come the spring.